Couch Coop here talking about an indie game that needs to be spoken about. It just won't go away. Vampire Survivors is all over the place. I don't mean that on a build level, I mean internet exposure. Indie Game Fanatics have built it as their game of the year and a lot of big name reviewers and people that I follow or look up to have considered it as one of the better roguelike twin sticks that have come out this year. I say twin stick, it does actually only use one stick and no real face buttons. Pretty awesome control scheme. My Couch Co-op Indie Game of the Year is in my top 10 Couch Co-op Split Screen Games of 2022 list. It is the number one game so pop on over and have a look at that offline single player indie games go song was a bit too strong for me to go up against this where is your game of the year video coop it is the next upload i make well, we'll just have to we'll have to wait okay let's talk indie game roguelike meta and this one is straight down the middle with all of the unlocks a little bit of risk of rain a little bit of enter the gungeon but that lovely huge open expansive weapon roster and unlock roster and of course the chance to sort of upgrade certain drops to give them more power when having them appear in game a very compelling character roster that offers all kinds of perks and buffs from start depending on who you go with you get a couple at the beginning but it's a real incentive to push and unlock some of those cooler looking dudes So this is how it starts. You're in a big, expansive world. There's a bunch of them. You unlock them incrementally, but you get this woodland area. There are no real barriers or mazes to navigate, and this area is massive. You'd be hard pushed to get to the edge of it. What you're doing is avoiding the enemies and the gauntlet, looking for turkeys as well. That's the health buff. But of course, it will send massive waves of all kinds of random crap at you. No real projectile enemies just yet. This is all about keeping your distance from everything. But as you can see, it throws a few curveballs here and there. Each failed enemy drops a little bit of this high roll currency that you see, and that builds up that blue bar at the top. Every time you get to the top, you get offered a chance to level up a particular piece of gear or get something new. It's the classic follow a route down a particular destination and you'll turn your build into something completely crazy. But at the start, each character is bare bones and that health, that's all you've got. If you rub up remotely close to any enemies, you hear this horrible noise and it starts to dive down. The turkeys, i.e. the health drops, are few and far between and you have to shoot the lamps and various bits of furniture for them to spawn in. Didn't get that the first time round. At the 10 minute mark, it normally ramps things up. And I do like the enemy design with the forest theme. You've got praying manti there, funny little ghouls flying around. And every so often you get hemmed in, little shop of horror style. You can bust out of this circle, but I like to just hardcore it in there and just smash everything that comes anywhere near me. Is there like major character differences? Supposedly so. If you start with one of the mage based characters, you have a range based go to first weapon. And there's a Belmont style starter character who's all about melee and that cool axe and the whip getting that upgraded, changing the color of it. But as you can see, it's all about finding that gap or even boring a gap into the wall of the enemies that are coming in your direction. This is tense, it's very exciting. It goes from unbelievably simple twin stick gameplay to a very very hectic almost resource management herding system by making sure all these enemies are behind you and you're doubling back to pick up the high roll dollar level variation is a little bit strange because this is all about open plan game maps so you're not having to worry too much about getting stuck in something or dead ends but there is cool little horseshoe shaped rooms that allow you to sort of herd the enemy inside them and, and then deliver huge damage on a sort of trapped pack and you can see that there's also little alcoves that allow you to circumnavigate certain difficult situations so it's worth checking out your surroundings but don't be worried that you're going to get lost or stuck down a dead end there is an arrow pointing to a box that I need to get to or a relic that would open up more levels or even something better on that main menu. The boxes are a bit like loot drops and they have a rotationary cool or rare loot item available to you and you have to whack the button to try and get hold of it. It's quite addictive and sometimes you'll get a really cool angle of weapon by default and that will sort of open your eyes up to a whole new direction that you didn't have 
on board when you started the game. A good example of that is the garlic. I was like, why do I want that? That's not going to do anything. It's like a passive power, but it actually puts a ring of death around you. If you amp the garlic up loads, you are then kind of invincible to a certain extent. And I was at a point where this level just plateaued. Nothing could get near me. I got a health regen perk, which meant I got everything back Diablo style the more I killed. So it does need a tiny bit of refining, I think. On an addiction level, it is absolutely ridiculously good. It's a dangerously good. It's stopping me from doing the edit for the got you video any downtime i get from being on the playstation 5 i just put this on and i go for a run doesn't matter if it's 10 30 40 50 minutes i burnt my dinner yesterday because of this game what's the deal with bosses well it throws in these big rare characters they'll have an outline around them they'll be the biggest bullet sponges ever and they'll just make a beeline to you it's blatantly obvious who they are and when they're spawned in and there'll be some accolades about getting particular boss creatures in certain levels i like that idea it's very cool it's not like it locks you in an arena and goes full archval on you could it have been a couch co-op god damn it yes what a travesty. Come on, give us a Nobody Saves the World and update this, make it local co-op. It would be epic. You know it would. Screaming, shouting, getting cut off from each other. You could even have a split on the screen or even a static singular. So can you look into that, please? I have been Couch Coop. I will. That you're dead. <laughs> now hang on to your feelings, all right? Because it's going to get fucking hairy.